revitalizing the buildings. All we can grow. That is a beautiful, uh, sustained development in North St. Louis as well as uh, Oak Sarah. So we've seen a lot of investment in neighborhoods that haven't seen it in a long, long time. There's a lot of work to do. I am an a, a advocate for what Paul McKee is doing on the north side. He's got a plan. He has uh, a vision. And, you know, what happens if he succeeds? Think about that for a minute. What happens he's, if he uh, does not he's, he's, he's acquired a lot of property. He's got a vision. What happens he's going to do a lot of infrastructure. He's going to create opportunities there that people have been crying for for decades that we haven't been able to see in the past. And that's if he succeeds. If he doesn't succeed, we still have a lot of this property that's now now assembled, which have been, has been pretty much separated for years, and it's hard to market. So it's going to be a marketable property. And we need to make sure we are marketing, by the way, North St. Louis for some very significant developments, and we're going to continue to do it. Frankly, uh, we got a lot of work to do. Okay, I think we're not Uh, I'm a real estate broker, and uh, looking at what's going on, he, uh, 1,500 acres is too much for one person to do. We should divide that up into 40 acres of a mule. That means that you have more work done quickly with more people involved in the process. Uh, you can develop this neighborhood city in North St. Louis in four years. If you have every war that has a uh, neighborhood development uh, plan and strategy, nobody in North St. Louis has seen the plan, at least I haven't, as to what Mr. McKee going to do. Uh, I haven't seen it. Now, when somebody ever brings you a plan for you, I hope you understand it's not for you. So I don't think that if you weren't involved in the table when the plan was made, you are out of the plan. And I'm not that dense where I think that this person is going to come to our town from nowhere and tell us what the plan is, and you're going to have a piece of a cake or a pie. Uh, I believe this is another made-off thing, and I'm not for it. And the way you develop neighborhood, you develop the people. The people in the neighborhood should build a build build city. And uh, if you allow somebody outside of the neighborhood to come in and lean your resources and, uh, and get out of town for a fair project, down to down to Brazil somewhere and spend the money. So what I'm trying to say is that you develop the people in the neighborhood to build their own neighborhood, to develop contractors to do the job. I work for the minority contractors and we develop minority contractors to do work in the city and we have vacant lots in the city and, and the LRA owns most of them and vacant houses. The homeless can move in those vacant houses, repair them with some, uh, some, some skills, with some work, uh, 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 sweat equity, and all that rebuilding these houses, living in the houses, and we can put some arms or some. We some get it. Okay. <laughs> That's the same for the evening. Third, what, 40 acres on a mule. All right. This is actually a really, really serious question. Uh, this one points out a distinct difference between me and my opponent. Uh, because if you heard what he said, he talks about doing development to a neighborhood or do or to the people. But these things need to be done in cooperation with the community. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I, I'm telling you from experience. I mean, we did it through Lafayette Square, we did it downtown, and in Loft District, we, we, we were able to rebuild those communities in a way where those communities came back stronger. I don't know how many of you have been to 1111 Mississippi, but the community band together and they said, no, we don't want that building torn down. Guess what the developer was saying at the time? It cannot be saved under no circumstances. It has to be torn down. I worked with the community. We saved that building. We saved buildings all through Lafayette Square, even some of the ones down here on Washington Avenue. And now they're thriving. And now some, there's some of the most successful businesses and restaurants in our city. And that came from the residents and the people who were invested with their lives and everything within that community. And we need to remember that when we move forward. Here's the big challenge with Paul McKay's deal. Big challenge is this, is that if for whatever reason this thing ends up upside down, it's not as easy as uh, my opponent said 
just to go in and acquire the land and go do something with it because that land is going to have a tremendous amount of debt on it. It's a very important project, no question about it. But it's how we approach it and it's the direction we go to get it done is the major difference in this thing. If you take a look at just, 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 just some of the land that the city gave Paul McKee in terms of the LRA land. Okay.